We are here today to talk to Jane Toppin, an infamous serial killer who claimed 31 innocent lives. <laughs> Hello, it's great to talk to you today, Jane. Hi, thank you for having me. Jane was born in 1854 as Honora Kelly and was the daughter of Bridget Kelly and Peter Kelly. They were Irish immigrants. Could you tell us about your childhood? How was your relationship with your family? My mother died of tuberculosis when I was very young, so I have very little memory of her. My father was an abusive alcoholic whose actions generated local rumors of insanity. Jane's father took her to an orphanage when she was six years old. Jane never saw her father again. She would remain there for a couple of years before being placed as a servant to Anne Toppin, who she lived with until adulthood and whose name she adopted. Prior to the murders, would you say you had a self healthy social life? Um, because of the conditions of my childhood, I really never learned how to make friends. I was more wrapped up in my killings and petty theft rather than being social. And people my age didn't really like me. They found me to be dishonest. Jane Toppin graduated high school and then attended Cambridge Hospital to train to become a nurse. She was well liked by her superiors, although some of her co-workers found her to be dishonest and off-putting. Nevertheless, she earned the nickname Jolly Jane before she was transferred to General Hospital in 1889. What happened while you were working as a nurse? After working at General, I briefly returned to Cambridge Hospital, but I was soon fired from there for administering opiates recklessly. But after that, I found work as a private nurse. No one knows who Jane Toppin's first victim was, but it is speculated that she killed over a dozen patients at her time at Cambridge. Jane would fondle patients who were victims as they died and derived sexual thrill from patients being near death. How did you kill your victims? I administered a drug mixture to the patients I chose as my victims. Then I would lie with them and hold them, at, hold them close to me as they died. Did you leave a special signature after your murders? I had no special signature I left at the crime scene. I only killed patients. I wanted to serve as mortal relief and liked performing autopsies as a nurse. In 1901, Jane Toppin moved in with the elderly Alden Davis and his family to take care of him after the death of his wife, Maddie, whom she had previously murdered. Within weeks, she had killed Davis, his sister Genevieve, and his two daughters, Minnie and Edna. Can you tell us how you were finally caught? The surviving members of the Davis family, who I had been slowly murdering, ordered a toxicology exam on a victim named Minnie. The report found that she had been poisoned and local authorities put a trail on me. On October 29, 1901, I was arrested for murder and by 1902, I had already confessed to 31 more murders. Did you eventually stay in trial or did you take a plea bargain? Um, I insisted on my own sanity in court, claiming that I couldn't be insane if I knew what I was doing. But nonetheless, on June 23rd, I, found, I was found not guilty by reason of insanity and committed to um, Taunton Insane Hospital for the rest of my life. There, Jane Toppin died on October 29th, 1938, at the age of 84. Well, thank you for sharing your story, Jane. My pleasure. Thank you.